morning and welcome to the 2020 Summer Reading Program from the Oakhurst Branch Library and the North Fork Branch Library. This year our theme is Dig Deeper and today we are with Kathy Miller. Kathy Miller will be teaching us how to pack a mule and how to camp with horses. So thanks for tuning in. This is our virtual summer reading program. We miss you guys. See you soon. Hi boys and girls. My name is Kathy Miller. I'm a member of the Sierra Free Packers Unit of the Backcountry Horsemen of America. And I'm here today to tell you about camping with horses. Now, hopefully all you guys are familiar with camping. I hope you guys get to go camping. One of my favorite things to do. I love to be outside. But if you're camping and you're going to take your horses, there's a few more things you need to plan than a normal camping trip. Normally, if you're camping, you're going to go to a campground. They, you know what facilities they have. But we're, today, we're going to talk more about Camping out in the forest where there is no campground, there are no facilities. So what do we need to bring? Well, we need to bring our normal camping stuff, our tent, our sleeping bags, some food, a little cook stove, our clothes. And for our horses, we need a, a collapsible bucket is very handy. It's easy to carry, but you have a bucket if you need it. Some brushes. And these are hobbles. We're going to get into more. I'll show you how to use hobbles. These are different styles of hobbles. And we need a way where we're going. There's not going to be a corral for our horses. So we need a way to restrain them. We're going to use a high line. I'm going to show you how to make a high line for, to keep your horses on. And one other thing we need. There are no bathrooms, no porta potties, no nothing up there. So we bring our handy dandy shovel and we dig a hole when we need to. Other things to know are what are the rules where you're camping? Horses are allowed to camp anywhere in the national forest except for some campgrounds. Some campgrounds you can camp with horses, some you cannot. Some, and so you need to know if you're gonna camp in a campground if horses are allowed. Out in the forest, you're all good. But what is your horse gonna need while you're there? A horse like this is going to eat 15 to 20 pounds of hay every day. There is no way I can carry enough feed for my horses. So I need to go somewhere where there's a nice meadow for them to graze. And of course they need water. They, have, they drink a lot of water. I cannot carry enough water. So there has to be a good water source where I'm staying. You need to know what restrictions the forest may have. Right now, there are no campfires allowed in the Sierra National Forest except in a campground. So we have to be prepared to have no campfire. We just have our little gas stove. You might need a permit. If you're heading into the wilderness, you need a wilderness permit. There might be other permits, so you need to check it out before you go. Okay, so if you, when you got all your stuff together, we're gonna pack all our gear on little old Happy here. These are called panniers. Easier to call them bags. <laughs> the official name is pin. These are lined with a, a lightweight wooden box, which makes them easier to handle, easier to pack things into. You can get plastic liners, which are nice because they're lighter. But all of this stuff is going to go on Mr. Happy. He's not real big, so he can easily carry about 100 pounds. I would maybe up to 150, depending. But that's another thing to know is where you're going, what the trail's like. If, it, if it's a long distance, steep, rough trail, you don't want to pack too much on your mule. You want to make it a little easier for him. He's an older guy, so I try to keep it at 100 pounds or less. So first, I'm going to saddle him up. It's already been groomed. This is a pack pad made for a pack saddle. It's much bigger than the pads for a riding saddle. And the reason it's much bigger is it comes down on his belly more to help protect his sides from those bags and box or boxes that might be on there. And this is our pack saddle, which is on the heavy side. This pack saddle 
It's called a Decker pack saddle. You may or may not have seen these. More common in this area is a sawbuck pack saddle, which has wooden crosses on here instead of the metal. This one's metal. It's got a wooden tree underneath. And this pad, it's called a half breed, don't really know why, is also to protect the animal. And this bar of wood also is for his protection. If I have something in there that's gonna put pressure in a small area, that helps distribute the pressure. Okay, my front and back set. First, we have to straighten out all these mini straps. This that goes around his hips is called a britchin. And this is on here to keep his load from sliding too far forward. And we also have a breast strap that keeps it from sliding backwards. You might want to show how we cinch him up. Or you can see, cinch it over. The saddle is called double rigged. There are two cinches on it, just to help carry the load. When we're cinching a pack saddle, we do it slightly differently than a riding saddle. And I always just get it a little snug first, gradually tighten it up on him. Not very nice to pull it really hard, really tight, all at one time. Anyway. On a riding saddle, your normal knot for your cinch goes like this. You go around through both sides and make a knot. When you're doing a pack saddle, you just start out the same, but instead of that, a real, a, more, more of a slip knot. We're gonna twist it around. Got the rough side of leather up on both ends and we're gonna poke it through like that. That way, should there be any accident and this mule falls or just decides to lay down and I need to get it off quickly, I can just pull it loose. You want your cinches snug, but you don't have to be aggressively tight with them. You can stay in place. But all animals anticipate that getting tight, and you have to come back later and check it and tighten it up a little. And we have a breast collar. I like to check that everything is where it's supposed to be. No wrinkles, nothing that's going to irritate him. Okay, he's got his saddle on. Now all of this needs to go in these boxes and ba or bags. So the main thing is get it even weights on each side. If I know what I'm bringing on a trip, I'll likely pack it up at home and figure it all out rather than messing with it here. But I didn't do that today, so we're guessing. <laughs> you can weigh things. People that are really precise will weigh everything, I guess. I can pretty much tell 
what's going to go, you know, if one is, if they're even weights or not, just by lifting. I check them a few times and make sure. That we have our first aid kit. Always good to bring a first aid kit and a hatchet. Shovel. You always want anything that might be sticking out to be at the back so that it won't get, that's short enough, it really won't get hung up on anything. most efficient way. how heavy it is. Get it as close as I can. Which that feels pretty good. And that is my lunch. <laughs> now I'm going to enlist the help of Amy because it's not fun to lift those up by yourself. Check his cinches. It's a course I've loosened. Start over, go. <laughs> this is my friend Amy, who also works at the library. You guys probably know her. And she's helping me this morning because it's really, it's not easy to pack up an animal by yourself. Possible, but it's so much easier when you have a helper. <laughs> You're getting smashed. <laughs> you always load, this is, horses and mules are typically mostly handled from their left side. You lead them from their left side, you mount them from their left side, you saddle them from their left side. So when we're pack, packing the bags onto the mule, we're going to load the right side first. So that should it happen, so when it comes off, the left side will come off first. That's just the standard. If anybody is, come, run, if you have an accident, someone's gonna help you, they know to take the left side off first. Accidents or what you don't like. Okay, I can lift. What I, you go on the she's far side. The straps go over. Put on the little. Yep. Doesn't like it, it's all crooked. Scoot over. Scoot over. 
One more step. Come on. No. Stubborn. That's the stubborn, stubborn mule, mule part. <laughs> My horse will move. What a kind of give it a little rock. Pretty straight. Leaning that way slightly. Not bad. And we're going to use it's basically a canvas tarp, but it's called a manti. We're going to cover our load just in case we get any weather. It also helps secure it on the mule. No little things will fly out. We want to get it about centered on it. want it to go behind those metal bars. You want to be able to see those. So when you see those from the back, you can tell if it's riding straight or not. If you can't see those, it's harder to tell if your load is straight. Switch it around. And we tie it down. Tell me that you know. Since you don't know how to tie it. I tie things by myself a lot, so I kind of have my way of doing it by myself. Heads up, Amy. Oops, coming over. your cinch, do a little half hitch, hold it in place. And that cinch does not have to be, that cinch does not have to be tight like your saddle cinch. It's just securing the rope. Then you go over again. We're gonna do a, a box hitch on each side. A very simple knot, which is all good. Just are basically making a loop. Goes around. I want it to be snug. And it helps to lift the weight off of the animal's side. It's a lot easier for him to carry weight on his back than on his side. Same thing on the other side. And I did something wrong. <laughs> 
He stayed there somehow. Once you lift that up, make sure you don't have knots in your rope before you start. <laughs> then I can tie it off up here. Maybe simple. Just a couple of hitches. Wind up my, the rest of it. You don't want you don't want anything hanging. Anything that might tangle, anything that the animal might step on. That's what you don't want. Alrighty. I think Happy is ready to go. Um, my saddle horses. I have a few tools, a little handsaw, some whoppers. In case we need any little down trees on our trail that we need to get through. Water, snacks that I can get to easily. When I'm gonna bridle them, I'm gonna leave their halters on underneath their bridles. Should we have to stop and fix anything on this mule, it's easy to tie them up quickly. I think that's all. We will mount up and ride out. <laughs> Where are my gloves? Because rope burns are not fun. My mule has never pulled away from me. But When we first get to our campsite, though, we're going to just tie our horses. And I'm going to show you how we're going to tie them for longer periods. It's not a good idea to leave a horse tied to a tree. It's hard on the trees. They'll walk and paw, like chew on the bark. Damaging for the trees. Of 
fishes all live together, they're fine being tied together. equipment which of course is in our pack so we have to unpack plus once we get to camp we don't want to leave all this on our mule one of the first things we're going to do is unload our mule camping and there's no other way to restrain our horses, there's no corrals or anything, we set up a high line, which is basically just a rope tied between trees. And we use what are called tree savers. It's just this nylon strap with a ring on it. It's better on the bark than a rope, less damaging to the tree. And we have handy things to tie a horse to. It just, it goes on your rope. Like that. And then you have a ring. So there's different styles. This kind swivels. This is one that doesn't swivel. I much prefer the swivelly kind. Because when you tie a rope on it and the horse moves around, they don't twist their rope up. These work. So we want to find two trees that are fairly far apart. I've got 50 feet of rope. But before you set up any camp, you want to look at your trees around. California's around here is not the best. Quite a few dead trees over there. But you definitely don't want to tie a rope to a dead tree. I'm going to use this one because it's not too big around either. I can manage to get something around it. And hopefully that one over there should have enough rope. But that one right there is dead to the top. So we don't want to tie to it. And it's not great to be camping underneath dead stuff. It's just extremely difficult around here right now to not be near any dead stuff. So I would not set my tent where some of those dead trees could fall on it. 
I'd prefer to not have my horses where that would happen, but they're fairly safe right over here. It's going to hit other trees before it hits the horses. So, I'm See, Happy is demonstrating why you do not tie your horses to trees. <laughs> ah, don't even think about laying down, Happy. up into the tree. We're going to put this around. I'm sure it doesn't help things any. find a stick out here to help you get it up. have a little tension on it I can pull it up a little higher oh I have two bits. so we want to put our little doodads on before we tighten it we want our animals to be away from the tree enough space in between that they don't tangle each other up. as high and as tight as you can get it.
going to be camping here for a long time, I would make it tighter than that. <laughs> I would have to find something to stand. Happy stuff. I don't normally, I would not, I'm not unsaddling all my animals right now. I would never put an animal on a high line with its saddle on. I'm going to show you how it goes with them saddled shortly for a short time. But if that rope were to sag, it could catch on the horn of the saddle and we could have an accident. But I just want to see, want you to see how this works. And tie them. Higher and tighter would be much better. You want them to be able to touch the ground, but not have enough rope to get tangled in. Tie them about that long. She can reach the ground and the rope gives a little so she can get down. If you're feeding her something, she can eat it, she can drink, she can lay down. My horses don't really like to lay down on a high line, but they will. You will always will. <laughs> And that way they have a good, they have a fair amount of freedom of movement on that line. Because she can come all the way over here, all the way over there. They are not stuck just standing like they would if they were tied to a tree. When we turn our horses out to eat in the meadow, we're gonna put on hobbles, which are straps that go around their front legs. That way they, they can still walk, and some horses do figure out how to move much faster, but it definitely slows them down at least. It keeps them more contained than if you just turn them loose, because these guys could decide that they're gonna take off, and we don't want that. These are different styles of hobbles. This one is two straps. One goes around each front leg with a chain in the middle. These are similar, but there's no buckles or straps. You just make them bigger. They're nice and soft, but I found them a little more difficult to keep on my animals. They, they work, it's, it's gonna, what kind works better is gonna depend on your animal, the size of their bones. This horse has really small legs. She needs something smaller. This, believe it or not, is also a hobble. The handy thing about this is, if you're going out for the day, you're riding, you can just stick your hobble right there on her neck, take off, if you need to restrain your horse for any reason, you've got him right there. Because you might have to get off, there might not be any trees to tie to or anything, and you need your horse to stand still while you do something else. So we'll show you how these go on, because they're a little trickier. Just go around their leg, through the metal loop, through the other metal loop, and around the other leg, and you buckle it. Oh, and she stepped in a hole. <laughs> All right, get the mover. Get the step. Okay. And it's best if you don't leave a rope on them for them to get tangled in. But that way she can still walk around and eat, but not run away. I hope that all of you guys get an opportunity to at least go camping over the summer. And if you're really lucky, you get to camp with some horses. And if you want to learn more, 
go to the library. They've got some good books on the subject. You guys have a good summer.